Hi guys, as a game master my time is incredibly precious. I never have enough time to prep for a game as much as I want to. Oftentimes, I only have a half hour or so to get everything ready. I'm about to show you is a tool I've been building that allowed me to build a detailed dungeon with dynamic lighting, create these player characters that we can use for the session. Place all of this, get everything set up in about 15 minutes. And that includes detailed room descriptions. They include a trap, key feature, some random items they might find, and some other things that are just helpful for fun flavor text. No, it seems like a lot, but thanks to computers we can make a lot of walls very, very quickly. And actually building this, I ended up making right about 1,028 walls. So let's get started. The first thing I did was open up our Game Master screen which I built in as a click on Envil up here, or as by using the command, and you can see from the help message right above it, that is backslash GM screen. Sometimes Foundry gets confused. A simple refresh often fixes that. You can see that opens it up to make it easy to get to. First of all, I can figure what our fights are going to look like. So I'm going to start by clearing out all of these. And let's build a dungeon type that's going to be fun for us. Right now we have it set for 500 to 800 XP, which would be good for a level 3, level 4 party. More on the level 4 side of that. And you can see that the challenge rating, we're up into the 3s. And, uh, I throw in the 4s and nudge this up. To 1,200. Next, let's figure out what the train type is going to be. I'm going to be mostly underground, but I think I'm also going to include the mountain there to give us a bit more of a monster pool to pull from. And then let's get into the type. I want this to be an undead dungeon. And that doesn't give us much to work with, so let's see what else could we logically add in. Let's start for that undead, but let's also make it so there are a bunch of oozes around. Because I think those work well. Maybe some aberrations? No, I don't like those. I'll add in some monstrosities, but I make them less common. So now that we have those set up, I'm going to change their names. Because those are all of the parameters we were using. And I only really care about that last parameter that's going to be different because the rest is the same. So I want to make the monstrosities much less common. I'm going to make the undead more common. And now we have this up. I could roll and drag and drop onto the map and if I hold down alt they're going to come in as hidden and that's all great. But I want to do this fast. I want it to just happen automatically. So let's make a dungeon. 12 rooms would be good for two sessions ish. I've turned off trace walls, that nice bold black line around it, it makes it look prettier, but it's faster to configure if we have that turned off to begin with. So now we're generating Dungeon 7, and you can see that here it is. And it's a pretty straight linear dungeon, it didn't have any crossovers or anything fun. So let's fix that, because I like players being able to get lost, they don't want them feeling like they have to go in one direction. So I'm going to start off by adding some additional rooms. Let's add a room down in here. Oh, I need to change to drawing rooms. Let's add a room there, room here. I'm just going fast. I could follow the grid exactly. I could double click into these and configure them to be all pretty and whatnot. But right now, my game prep time is limited. So let's just do this quick. And I could even be doing some of this on the fly as all of a sudden, oh, I should really have an extra room in here. Yeah, I'm sure that's happened to you in your games. <laughs> so let's finish this up a little bit. Let's make this connect back in there. That's going to create an odd door, but that's okay. I'm in a hoy, and that's going to be an acceptable thing to get this ready now. Now, this odd sign is our treasure room, so I want to make sure I don't have anything that connects directly to that. But I can have things entering the boss chamber from multiple angles. If our players 
flank around and clear several of these paths that could give them an advantage in that fight. You see that the new stuff doesn't have doors or anything on it yet. That's because it only draws it when we update, not when we add. So we're going to update this in just a sec. I'm trying to make this a confusing labyrinth. I'd probably even tone off the line of sight. Just to mess with them. Well, I'd leave the line of sight on, but I would turn off Fog of War so they can't remember where they've been unless they actually remember. Encouragements for actually keeping notes. Okay, now I'm going to configure this one, which is going to be an update instead of an addition, which is going to force everything to redraw. And you see that now we have doors, now we have pins. It's looking quite nice. I think I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to come up here to configure and turn trace walls back on. And then I'm going to just move this little bit. And that puts in the trace walls. Cool. Now let's get all of those encounters coming in. I'm going to change this to our new one, Nazdreth's layer. I'm going to change the name up here so that everything matches. Nazdreth's Cavern. Which leaves us wondering, who is Nazdreth? Well, if we come over here, we can see that we have a nice thing to hold all of our NPCs. And let's make Nazdreth a wizard level 5. Eh, there's going to be 4 or 5 level 4s, depending on how many people show up. Let's make him a level 6. He needs an edge. And he'll be ready there. Oh, she'll be ready. <laughs> Who have guessed that Nazdreth is a she? Okay, and we'll drop her down into the boss chamber. But, oh, we should rename her to Nazdreth, otherwise it won't make sense. Okay. I could have forced her to be, fe to be male, but mm, I'm okay with female bosses. I'll probably, when we roll up the NPC characters, I mean the player characters here in a minute, I'll fix that. Now it's holding alt when we generate this. You can see they're kind of grayish. That means players won't see them initially. Which is how I like to set things up. But you can also not do that and have them come in like that. So I'm going to delete this out of... Oh, there's the entrance chamber. Because of the door. So that's where I'm going to actually start off my player. So I want that to be empty. Because I'm not just going to throw them straight into a fight. I stick them right next to fights, but I won't throw them straight into a fight. And you're seeing that each time I'm doing this, it's switching from unknown to a link that allows you to open it up. So if you make changes here, whatever you may do, it's all linked together. You can also share things with your players. And it's going to show up in chat, and they'll be able to click in on to the pin and see what's going on. If it's shared. So you may need to actually go over to the journals, come in here and share chamber two. Oh, that's talent. So chamber two, let's configure permission and make it absorber. Now they'll be able to see that pin, click into it and see that green area, but they won't be able to see any of this red. So they can see that there's useful items, but it's going to be completely empty in here. They won't know if there is anything. And that's going to depend on my mood, how they look around, whether or else I view is important. So you guys can see just how fast it is to fill out this dungeon. Once they're all in. <laughs> she has trained gelatinous cubes standing in front of the door while she taunts the players. That is just evil. That makes Nazareth a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> boss. And of course, they encounter gelatinous cubes elsewhere, so it's not like it ought to be a surprise to them that they're in this dungeon. Space some of these things out a bit, so they look less randomly generated and more encounter-esque. So I don't want them to just Figuring out that there's always a creature on the upper left of each chamber. 
Okay. And we are essentially ready. So that didn't take long at all, but let's get some player characters set up here. Start off with a wizard male four. Oh, and let's make them all dwarves. A dwarven party to hunt down Nazdreth. And you can come up with maybe Nazdreth has done something to really make the dwarves angry. Okay, that's the wizard, barbarian, warlock, vital. And if one of the players decide they want something else really odd and specific, so like let's say cleric life domain, it's easy enough for me to add stuff and come in. Oh, Uh, really likes the image there and make it specifically what they're asking for with this many or as few parameters it's also possible to click into any of these and change the token to something else so it's very easy and fast to configure this we are ready to go we have a bunch of player character options that have their vision set up Oh, that's going to be a Volcano Dwarf. Yeah. Volcano Dwarfs loose the dark site. But you can see the vision is set up and things are ready to go. So many Volcano Dwarfs. And of course, if you want the random generator to not pour in anything, you can always go over to the world settings and say that my world will now no longer have any volcano dwarves. You are forbidden. <laughs> and that's easy to set your parameters however you want for your world. It's your world. I'm not going to tell you how things are supposed to go. And so I'm giving you lots and lots of parameters to customize the random generators and make it how you want it made. Thank you guys for watching. These are just two of the new features we're on. And there's a lot of other stuff in here. You can see all sorts of other generators that do cities. Build all of this together. Generating and linking stuff in. So there's been a lot, a lot of work. I've probably put in over 5,000 hours total. And these generators can handle everything that my players have done to me in games. I'm sure they're going to still throw things out there that I'm not ready for yet. And we'll keep building these generators, we'll keep adding new functions, and together, we're going to allow our players to adventure in worlds that have no limitations. Because our imagination is our only limitation. Thank you for wa all for watching. Follow this uh, uh, channel, like these videos, and uh, jump over onto Patreon and help us build bigger and better. Because I'd really like to commission artwork for these guys instead of using letter tokens. But there's only so much I can do with uh, $40 a month I'm making. God bless y'all and adios.